This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I'm a machine knitting teacher and I've just finished a book that I call Enchanted Edgings. This book is full of lace edgings that I've devised for brother knitting machines. They use the knitting machine and the lace carriage to do this scalloped edge automatically. That is, the number of stitches on the edging keeps changing going in and out all the time. This happens automatically. It's almost magic, and that's why I named the book Enchanted Edgings. And I'm just flipping through some of my working samples, which is not really the purpose of the video. The purpose of the video is going to be to go over a little bit about how this is done and to give you some valuable information so that you can do some traveling edge lace with regular stitch world patterns on your brother machines. Now there are two methods in this video. One method, the second method, does use my method of doing them automatically. But you're going to need a special stitch pattern for that. The other method is doing the edgings using ordinary patterns from Stitch World or from your punch cards. A few patterns will do this and you have to know what needle numbers to be on to do those patterns. The one method, the first method, is using ordinary Stitch World and punch card patterns and I've picked a Stitch World pattern for the video that makes this pretty lace scarf. And it can also be done using an automatic pattern which I've included in the book. The automatic is a little easier. Now the question that people ask me about my method of using the Stitch World patterns is why do I add extra needles before every lace carriage sequence? Well, I add extra needles because what you're typically told to do is keep track of what needle number you should be on every single row of knitting and I don't like to do that. I add extra needles, run the lace carriage, then remove the extra needles and run the knit carriage. But this is my method of not having to follow a map and being able to make large pieces of knitting without making a mistake because I have a routine that works. Now various pattern stitches will do this. You need a lace pattern with a traveling stitch. One of the lace patterns that will do this is stitch number 168 in Stitch World for the 965i. There are various ones. You can see a chart for this one on my blog. Now to begin the pattern you need to be cast on from stitch number 25 left to stitch number 25 right. And I've done a repeat so I'm going to go on with what I've done but you would cast on and begin at this point because this is the first row in the pattern. Before using the lace carriage you bring out one extra needle on the right and one extra needle on the left. Then you do the lace transfers. This is a multiple transfer lace so it's going to take quite a few rows to do the lace transfers. done all of the lace transfers, you look on each end of the knitting and if you still have an empty needle or you have two empty needles, take it out of work. Then two rows with the main carry. Bring out your extra on the right, extra on the left, and do your lace carriage transfers. Then, on, in this particular case, I don't have any extra to put back on each side, so I just leave it. And the reason for that is that it's getting wider on each side. It has moved a stitch outward, and it's making it wider. That's what's so pretty about it, is that it gets wider and it gets narrower. Put out my extra. Again, it increased and got wider. Put out my extra.
it increased so there's no extra to put back. Put out the extra needle on each end. Now I need to put the empty needles back. That was a stay the same row. And I believe the row coming up is a decrease row. It decreased on each end as I was pushing the lace carrier. Consequently, once my lace transfers are done, I have to put those empty needles back. And you just proceed in this fashion you get absolutely the most beautiful multiple transfer scallop lace. Now I have another method of doing this that I'm going to show next. Now this is the procedure for doing the scalloped edge lace automatically. I have cast on from needle number 28 left to needle number 28 right and I have set my machine up with this custom lace stitch that I designed and I downloaded it to the machine. And now what I'm going to do is set the main carriage to KC2 and go from the right to the left. It selected all of the needles. Then I push in the part buttons. I'm going to leave the part buttons in from now on and I push back across. Even though the part buttons were in, it knits the selected needles. They were all selected, so it knitted all of them. Now I'm going to take the, the carriage and I'm going to put it all the way over on the extension rails so it's off the machine. Now I bring on the lace carriage. The regular carriage has already selected some of the needles for the first row of knitting. So I go ahead and do my lace transfers. Note that it is not necessary to do any needle counting or bring out extra needles. I know I've done all of my lace transfers when it selects almost all of the needles for the main carriage. And now I will knit two rows with the main carriage. And again, it has selected the needles for the first row of the lace. Then I use the lace carriage. Now, in this instance, it has decreased. It is getting narrower along the edge. Here on the left end of the kneading, there is one unused needle. It did not select it and it is not going to be knitted by the regular carriage when I pass across because the regular carriage is in part. And then I'm ready to use the lace carriage again. Pretty soon you get a routine going. Use the lace carriage. until it selects the needles across, then use the main carriage. And then the lace carriage. Isn't it wonderful that there's no counting or hand increasing or decreasing to do? It just makes this beautiful edge all by itself. So that's all there is to doing the automatic lace.